Over the last couple of weeks, we got the majority of the drywall done here in the addition. All of downstairs is done. Up here, the kitchen, the living room, and the hallway are finished. So all we have left is the bathroom and the bedroom. Yeah, once we move on past that, we still have mudding, taping, texturing. A few weeks from now, we will have some cabinets that are going to be installed in here, which is really exciting. But there's a lot to be done between now and then. So let's get to work. We are starting here in the master bedroom because this is where all the whiteboard is. And that way we can knock out all of that first. The green board is still downstairs in Jeremy's truck, which we need for the bathrooms because it's moisture resistant. But we're actually going to have to schlep that up board by board. This back wall is not going to have any drywall. We've decided to make that an accent wall since that's where the bed will be going. So I think this room is going to go relatively quickly. Wall number one here in the master bedroom is now complete. That came together nicely and we only have two more to go. That's because this fourth wall, like we mentioned earlier, is not going to be drywall. What's going to be a mama? Yeah, so we decided we were going to do a shiplap and that was before we even knew what we were going to do on the ceiling. So two videos back, we asked you guys if we should do wood or shiplap on the ceiling and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly. the votes came in. Overwhelmingly, the votes came in for the creamy white shiplap. Melissa wins again. <laughs> no, the people have spoken. The people want what the it's people fine. want. It's fine. It'll look good. It'll look good. So we're going to be ready to shiplap horizontally on the ceiling. And then my thought was just to continue running it horizontally down the accent wall. But then Jeremy said that it would look like a bread box. You know, one of those. It would with the sliding door. <laughs> yeah, we had one of those. Yeah. My brother made it in shop class. So we don't want the room to look like a bread box. So we were thinking maybe we should flip it and run it vertically and then just trim it out. So the walls one piece ceilings one piece. Do you guys think that would look weird? Like, should we go horizontal with a shiplap or should we go vertical? Melissa wants vertical. Let's see if she wins again. <laughs> you wanted vertical. Jeremy is continuing to do the insulation and I have snuck out here to give a quick little update on Whiskey, our mini horse. So I've noticed a major herd dynamic change here. Right now, Lexan and Blue just hang out everywhere together. Blue has claimed the left stall, Lexan has the stall on the right, and Blue no longer wants Whiskey to be in there with him. So he's been running him out of the stall and he's been running him off of his food and he's been pinning his ears at him and just a big change that I didn't really expect because they were together for so long. But now Blue's got a horse his own size and he just sort of wants to hang out with Lexan. So poor Whiskey is alone a lot and he's kind of just being picked on by both the big horses. So my farrier that was out here last week, she's actually got other minis. She's got a mini horse and two mini donkeys and a little burrow. And so she thought it'd be really fun to take him and train him. So he's gonna go over there and live with all the other little miniatures. So everyone's his size and he's not gonna get picked on. I am putting the first ride on blue since we got him. I'm recording this on my cell phone if it's a little grainy and uh, a little windy, sorry about that. So I'm not supposed to be riding horses right now. I'm supposed to be hanging drywall and I was just supposed to run out and check on the horses. But we have not ridden blue yet because I wanted to get two weeks of joint supplements into him just because his knees were a little stiff when we got him. And also we just wanted to spend 14 days getting to know him. Lots of circle time, lots of groundwork. And he's been, he's been doing awesome and we're having fun. So I'm going to make this a really short ride because if Jeremy looks out the window and sees that I'm riding horses, he's going to wonder what the heck I'm doing. Hey! You want ride? Oh, I'm a son of coal A daughter of Tsar From the dice you came From the dice you are Come on, go for a walk. Hey. We're not beautiful Oh, 
like you. So this is a very unconventional living space and a lot of the walls that we have in here are actually shorter than eight feet, which is the full length of a full sheet of drywall. But here on this back wall here in the master bedroom, we are exceeding that eight feet. So we're going back to turning everything horizontally rather than vertically while also staggering our seams. I'm snotty. It was so high, yeah, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's 5.30. I'm gonna go make meatloaf. Meatloaf din din? Meatloaf. Woo, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna keep working in the closet unless you want me to do this. No, I'll do the closet because it's, I'll help you with this ball. No promises, I'm not gonna get the whole thing done, but I'll get what I can done. We're getting a really late start to the day today, and so I am craving that third cup of coffee, but I am limiting myself to only two cups of coffee a day, so I'm gonna be reaching for a healthier alternative, mud water. As you guys know, I'm really trying to focus on my nutrition this year, and I've been doing a lot of research, which keeps bringing me back to one thing, mushrooms. Here's the problem though, I don't actually like mushrooms. Thankfully, about a year ago, I found mud water. Their rice cacao is a healthy coffee alternative with four functional mushrooms, but here's the thing, it doesn't taste anything like mushrooms, which is perfect for me. So now we get all the benefits of cacao, lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, and reishi. Benefits that include supporting our mood, focus, physical performance, and our immune system. We love ours warm and creamy whole milk or iced with oat milk. The rich flavor tastes just like cacao and chai got together and had this delicious little baby in a cup. It totally satisfies that coffee craving, even though it only has a fraction of the caffeine. Mudwater is also 100% USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, plant-based, and kosher. The energy I feel after drinking mud water actually feels good. No jitters, no afternoon crashes, and none of that sick feeling that I used to get after drinking way too much coffee. So if you're like me and you're looking for a healthy alternative to coffee, give mud water a try. And right now, mud water is hooking our viewers up with a very special offer. Just go to mudwater.com slash goodsimpleliving and you can get started for $29. That's M-U-D-W-T-R dot com slash goodsimpleliving. So it is absolutely miserable out. I wanted to come out and make sure that the lambs were okay and that they were undercover and they had dry hay and everything. And I'm also checking my females every couple of days to see if they're bagging up. We didn't get any lambs last year because our ram, Manny, he's a hungry boy and he free ranges and he got really, really fat, like obese, and he just could not get the job done. So we put him on a little bit of a diet and we're hopeful that he was able to do it this year. <laughs> I saw them breeding in the fall and I'm kind of hoping for lambs by Easter. So I keep checking them to see if they're bagging up, but I don't know, I'm hopeful. Manny, leave it alone. <laughs> no, don't. Get away from the camera. No, don't, <laughs> get away. I don't know, man. Did you get the job done this year? Did you? Did you? All right, you guys stay warm. So I don't really know. Mona kind of let me check her, but I'm trying to see if she's bagging up, which basically just means that they're starting milk production. And that usually means that birth is uh, coming up soon. So maybe it's just a little early or I don't know. I guess we'll be surprised. Hola. Hola. I'm blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. You guys see your new closet? Yeah. Check it out. You've been hanging out here. That looks good. Nice, yeah? Yeah, it's a Maybe lot of space. little pieces. I tried to use as many scraps as I could because we're starting to run low on sheets. Six sheets left. Do you think we have enough? Yeah, we'll have enough. Barely, but I think we'll have enough. We have so many scraps, we can build a tiny, tiny little playhouse. Doghouse? We think we ended up with more scraps than we had full sheets. Oh. I wish we could put them back together like play oh. out. Oh. Oh. Boom, that's how it's done. <laughs> Come on, one more wall.
Jeremy is cutting the very last piece for the bedroom. That little piece up there. And then we are officially done with the bedroom. Yay! That means we only have the bathroom left to do. And that's very, very exciting. And the utility closet. It just goes on and on. So, speaking of going on and on, I know all of you guys are wondering about the tape and the mud and saying, I don't want to watch 14 weeks of Jeremy meticulously sanding the drywall. And you don't want to watch it and I don't necessarily want to do it. Actually, I don't mind doing it. I really enjoy doing it. But to get all of this done, this entire building, pretty much by myself with just Melissa's assistance is going to take forever. Forever. So, alternatively. Yeah. So we decided that we were just going to have our friend Clay come. He did all of the texture in the house. He did that old world texture. That's what we're doing in this building as well. Garage and up here. We're going to we go. doing it in the garage? Oh, I don't know. I thought that's what you wanted to do. I thought you just wanted to do like some wild, crazy splatter pattern. Okay. Maybe we'll get wild and crazy in the garage. <laughs> up here, we're going to go with a nice classic old world. Um, they have to do it by hand. So since he's coming to do that, we're going to have him do the tape and mud as well. He's going to be able to knock it out in just a couple days. So our gift to you is that you don't have to watch a bunch of videos of us sanding and mudding and taping. You're welcome. <laughs> Just a couple days, that's it. All right, mama, we're done in here. Let's move on, next room. Well, we are officially done with the whiteboard, which is fantastic. That means we are almost done. So next we are doing what is essentially the laundry room, but it's really just a utility closet. This is going to house the washer and the dryer and then vacuums and whatever else you want to store in here. So we are going with green board, which is moisture resistant. We decided since there's a washer and dryer in here, even though there is an exhaust fan, we are still going to go with moisture resistant drywall in here just to be safe. Also, because we're not doing any wood material up on the ceiling, it'll be green board up there as well. We already went ahead and put our six mil poly plastic up on the ceiling to serve as a vapor barrier before sticking the drywall up. So as you probably know, you put the drywall ceiling up before you do the walls, which is what Jeremy's doing now. We had a lot of questions in the last video as to why we didn't drywall the ceiling before we drywalled all of the walls. And that is because we are doing, as we mentioned before, shiplap for the ceiling. Plus so, it's enough drywall. That's enough. <laughs> it's enough everything. drywall. Do you really want to watch us drywall the ceiling? You don't. So we have the walls done. The ceiling's going to go up after the texture happens. Then we'll put up the ceiling. Then everything will get painted all at one time. So we're putting up drywall ceiling only where it needs to be moisture resistant in this utility closet and in the bathroom because we didn't want to do a wood product up on the ceiling even though there is water resistant paint and everything to protect shiplap. We just didn't want to risk it, especially after the swelling issues that we had last week. We figured let's just go with moisture resistant drywall in the bathroom and in the utility room and then everywhere else can look pretty. It's a horrible first cut around this uh light box here my bit was a little too shallow so i don't know it's a mess but i think that's uh hopefully gonna be covered up with the final light that we install and if not i don't know i'll find some work around try to do better on the next one all of our green board is down in the garage and back of my truck we're gonna have to shut those up here one by one so. Well, thanks. We have seen the glory of the Lord rise with broken lives restored, but not by governments nor the fire. Too long day. Jeremy is downstairs cutting the next piece and I just wanted to thank the sweet subscriber that sent us the morale, the chocolate covered ruffle potato chips. I mentioned probably two years ago that I absolutely love chocolate covered potato chips ever since I went to college in North Dakota. They made a product called Chippers 
and I miss them. And somebody remembered and they sent me three boxes. And that is so sweet, thank you. We are down to our last two panels here in the utility closet where we have a ton of things to cut around. We have the uh, box for our dryer. We have the actual washer box. We'll go ahead and remove this shroud. We will rob this plastic covering for the vent on our dryer box. We need to take a bunch of really careful calculations, measurements, make sure that we aren't screwing anything up here. Cause like I said, there's a million and one things to be cutting around. What? What, why are we, what's going on? Yeah. Why are we? <laughs> A bunch of white powder. <laughs> your, fing your fingers are okay. 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 No, you look good. Okay. Let's get back to work. Alright, on the last piece. You ready? Yeah. I am ready. I'm over it. I know, I know you are. It's been weeks of drywall. It sure has. Tomorrow, let's do anything but drywall. Sounds good to me. <laughs> anything. The next day, we didn't do much of anything. Not by production standards, anyways. But in actuality, it was perfect. We came out here four years ago seeking freedom. And then day one, we got straight to work. But it's days like this, quiet, slow, and full of all of the simple stuff that makes us realize that we've been too busy. The truth is that we had the freedom to make our own schedule. And with that freedom, we somehow got lost in the artificial timelines and the self-imposed standards that we created for ourselves, that we haven't done enough of days like today. Now I'm not talking about family fun vacations or intentional outings, but just simple days of not getting dressed and taking time to observe the life that we've been so occupied with building. In today's world, we all need to set time aside where we turn off the noise and we do a little bit of nothing. There's always going to be something that you could be doing, that your mind will tell you that you should be doing. And I used to think that it would always be the world outside that distracted me from being present. But these oh, no. days, I'm seeing that sometimes the inside noise, that little voice inside your head, if you allow it, can be even louder than the noises outside.